as you can see, I'm controlling with my mouse and keyboard. Move back, forward, right, left, and jump. Switch hotbar. Um, you know, we can like break trees and stuff. I'm not going to hurt the kitties, don't worry. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is probably going to be one of the cooler videos I've done in a while. Um, so cool, we're actually going to be building a reinforcement learning environment based off of Minecraft. Yes, you heard that correctly. Uh, we're essentially going to be, you know, sh showing you how to mess around with pixels and set up uh, a Minecraft reinforcement learning environment on your own computer. So uh, I guess we could just get right into it, to be honest. There's not much to else uh, I have to cover. So first of all, you're going to navigate to this GitHub repo. So I add this in the description in the video, so you could navigate over to this. Um, and this is pretty much going to give you a guide for setting up. And before I go into the setting up process of this repo, um, I should show you where this comes from. So there is a, the, this is this is inspired by MineRL. So this is the environment and all the libraries, and we're pretty much standing on top of the we're we're, we're standing on the shoulders of giants in this video. So the giants and the giant in this case is MineRL, and so they have a nice setup guide, a bunch of tutorials, and uh, they go in a lot more depth than I do in this video, just because of time constraints. Um, you know that they have somewhat of a large community. They have their own, you know, Git repo. They have a bunch of stuff in here. If you experience any issues uh, along this entire thing, you can totally feel free to investigate here. If you're trying to, you know, figure out, you know, an installation error, uh, you search up that, and then you have a bunch of installation stuff. Um, but I should give you a heads up before we get it before we get too too far in depth. Uh, this is only back tested on Linux. So I haven't tested this on Mac. I haven't tested this on Windows. This only, uh, to my knowledge, and based on what I've tested and the documentation here, this is designed specifically for Ubuntu Linux or Debian based systems. Um, so just a heads up there. Um, if you are on Ubuntu, you know, this, that's great, of course. But if you aren't, uh, I still advise you stick around because you're going to learn some really cool things here. And whether or not you can start it up on your own uh, on your own rig, uh, it's still really helpful to know some of this stuff. Um, so, anyways, yeah, let's let's just jump right into it. So, um, I've already installed everything here. I already have this uh, entirely set up. So, uh, you're pretty much just going to go into a, a folder here and you just just choose the directory that you're comfortable with making this project in. You're going to copy and paste this directly over, and you're going to run Enter. Um, I'm not going to run enter because this is already done. We're just trying to speed through this documentation so we can get to the fun stuff. Um, then you're going to want to check and make sure that you have Java. So Java version and then Java C. So both of those are good. You want to make sure you have the same versions as me or 1.8 something, 1.8. 1 um, make sure Python is installed. So I have Python aliased. If I go to... Um, Wrong one. Um, but you can do Python dash version or Python uh, three version, uh, and as long as you get something that's like above three point six, about three point seven, you, like you, you shouldn't really have any worries. So after that's done, uh, just yeah, if 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 Python is being weird, use PyEnv. So PyEnv is a nice little tool that I use. Um, so go to 3.11, Python version 3.11. So it just helps you manage Python versions and go back and forth. It's just super useful to have something like that uh, in case things go wrong. Um, and then after this, you're pretty much just going to clone this repository, um, CD into it. So change directory into VPT. VPT is short for video pre-training. So there's like a paper on OpenAI published and it was literally called um, video pre-training from scratch. And it's pretty much just based off of that. It's like short form. So uh, you can set up your own environment and then you can continue and iterate on it and uh, do video pre-training as well. If that's something you want to uh, end up doing with this, with this repo, um, you make yourself a virtual environment, you source into it, you activate it. Um, you install MineRL itself so you can run Minecraft and set and start it. And then you install a bunch of requirements for doing like computer vision tests and, uh, just making sure that all the libraries for this project are actually uh, installed. Uh, and then you just pretty much run the main script, and that's it. So let's go ahead and do this. 
So I'm going to go into my VPT and there's a bunch of stuff in here, but ignoring that, I'm just going to source into it. I assume you've already done these commands already. And then we can literally just go Python, Python main.py and um, it'll load this up. We'll just give it a second here. It takes a little while to load, uh, mainly just because it has to fire up Java and everything. So uh, there's a bunch of things that have to get started and running for Minecraft to work. But uh, this is this is how you start up Minecraft using Python. Just, it's like literally two words, Python and then main. So uh, we'll give this a second here. And after this is done, we're going to jump into some code about how we can actually get this thing working. So as you can see, I'm controlling with my mouse and keyboard. Move back, forward, right, left, and jump, switch hotbar. Um, you know, we can like break trees and stuff. I'm not going to hurt the kitties, don't worry. So we can just press Q. It'll play a recorded video back in downscale resolution and grayscale pixels. So everything is down to one color dimension instead of three. We could just quit again. Um, and it'll finish just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open this in VS Code here. So if I just full screen this, I'll zoom in a little bit more just for you guys who are watching on a phone here. But pretty much, this is the this is the main script that we run. There's a bunch of other stuff in here that has like uh, architectures and, and all that, but I don't want you guys to mess around with this too much if you're not comfortable with it. So uh, for now, just uh, just mess around with this main file. So to start off, we import a bunch of things. So we import minorl, import gym. This is just for the gym environment. CV2, that's computer vision, and then V2. So uh, this is the open CV library in Python that allows us to uh, extract pixel data and do stuff with it, like feed it into deep neural networks. Uh, JSON, this is just if you're writing actions to a file, if you're you know, training a model on actions. Um, there's PyGame, which we use to display the game. There's NumPy, which we use to mess around with pixels and do operations on them. Uh, and then there's Pickle in case you want to uh, just save like a model file. Um, but I don't really think we need this in the code. Um, so I'll comment that out. Um, OS is just going to essentially like read this. So you're, you know, you're going to have some image scaling here, but that's, that's just for later on. Don't worry too much about this. Um, you know, your sample size is going to be one. So it's going to iterate through one episode of the entire game. So you're going to load in, you're going to go through an episode and then it'll stop. Um, and then this is just going to get your current working directory. So CWD current working directory, and that's going to be where the video file is saved. So it's going to go to uh, data, labeler training video and boom right here um and you know i can even uh, open this up so i can go mpv yeah, just like that and everything comes up here so that's what that is and our frame rate of course is going to be 30. we have a resolution we have pi game set up some stuff for us your in-game sensitivity so this is the mass sensitivity um and then we're just setting up a uh, a write stream for the frames so that we can, you know, view them afterwards. Um, it's just writing these frames to a file every single every single frame, uh, just all the pixels. Uh, and then you set up more stuff with Pygame, um, previous mouse position. Um, don't worry about this too much. And then this is this is an important part too. Um, I know this is kind of scatterbrained, but just bear with me here. So. This is really important. This is actually your key to action mapping. So when you press a button on your keyboard, Pygame is going to recognize that and say, hey, um, they pressed key W. So key is uh, K is key, and then they press W. So that's forward. And we're going to turn the forward action to one that frame. So if I'm on, you know, if I'm on a frame back here and forward is off, that means the character isn't moving forward that frame. But if I go to this frame over here, then the character is going to move, begin is going to be moving forward if this value is set to one. So that's all that is. It's just a zero or one each frame uh, about what what action they're doing, and this is stored in a dictionary, or at least the mapping is. And then uh, we can use the info from the dictionary to, you know, do more stuff with it and, and tell the game what to do and all that stuff. Um, same thing for a, a mouse to action mapping. Um, we fire up the environment here, so it's just going to be 
pretty much a build village house. This is the longest environment, so it gives you the most time to play around. Um, there's some other environments, but they, they're fairly short, so they'll give you like a few minutes, and that might not be enough. So just give you the biggest one here. Um, uh, a seed for reproducibility, so you can you know do the same. You get the exact same result, exact same world as I do each time. Um, OBS is observation, so uh, pretty much you you get you get this general observation you, once you reset the environment, and then you can you know the observation is going to uh, change as time steps go on. Set done to false, so that means we're just like not done the episode. Simple as that. Um, this is just the action space like we were looking at before here. Um, and then this is where we do all the cool stuff. So I'm not going to go over all these operations, but uh, pretty much this is going to handle images for us. Uh, we're going to get keys. We're going to get mouse, bu uh, mouse buttons, uh, or, or sorry, mouse, mouse and keyboard actions. That's what this does. Um, we're going to do some stuff with those positions. We're going to include the sense in this, but uh, th there, there's a lot of math here and there's a lot of like weird stuff. Um, you can logic your way through this, but... Uh, I'm not going to dive too deep into here. So uh, this, you know, this takes this takes care of a lot of complexity. This like <laughs> paragraph, if you will. Um, this is also an important function in MinorL. So observation, reward, and done. And then just this extra one, which has some like metadata or something. So the observation is going to give you your pixels. The reward is going to tell you, did you do something good or not? But we don't care about that because we're just messing around. We don't care about getting rewards in the game. Um, you would if you're actually training a model to do better in, in Minecraft, but we don't. Um, and then done, uh, pretty much. If done is false, then it'll keep going. And then if done is true, then it'll just stop the environment. So that's why we set done to false uh, up here. Okay. If the Q key is pressed, terminate. Um, handle Pi game events to avoid the window becoming unresponsive. Just some best practices here. Um, and keep in mind, I have a try block an accept and finally so it's going to try to do this and if it throws an error if it throws a keyboard interrupt error so i press like Control c on my keyboard and it and it breaks then it'll say okay that's okay we're going to pass and then finally before we actually terminate and just completely dump the process we're going to make sure that we properly close the camera resources so it's going to cut off the video um, making sure that it's not a corrupted file and it's going to turn off pi game so you don't get a bunch of pi game processes running in the background so just a little safety thing there, just a little safety net. Um, and then afterwards, it's just going to play back your recorded video to you. Um, if you get an error, it'll say can't open it. Um, and um, it's just going to play, it's just going to go through each frame here. It's just going to read it and play this back to you each frame in grayscale. So that's like literally the entire thing, 203 lines of Python. Um, so feel free to mess around with this. It's designed to be hackable, um, you know, go through it go back into the video and watch again if something didn't quite make sense. But uh, this is the overall premise. This is what we have going on here. Um, I will make updates to this repo. So, um, you know, in terms of in terms of actually having an AI learn from this game uh, or, or from Minecraft, that is not implemented right now. So I have like ResNets. Um, so it's like ResNet inference v1. So th there's like not that much done here yet. But uh, the end goal is, you know, maybe in a few months or a year, or if, if this video becomes really popular, I might just add an iterate onto this thing so that you guys can play around with, you know, data and neural networks, uh, playing Minecraft on their own. So, uh, if you found this video helpful, you know, subscribe, you don't have to, it's totally free. I mean, I make pretty good videos on this channel. If you enjoy them, uh, just spreading the awareness and just saying, you know, Elliot makes re good, really good videos on coding. It just helps other people learn faster helps us accelerate and um you know I, I don't expect you to but it's it would just help the channel grow and it would help others become more aware about the the good content that's on this platform so uh and before i end the video here um you might be asking elliot you explained this really well i was able to understand it or elliot i don't quite understand this you're terrible at explaining coding concepts um you know either way you might want me to explain this a little better to you so for those of you asking elliot do you provide uh, consulting services or one-on-one -on -one tutoring, uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. So I left a link in the GitHub repo if you want to follow that. Uh, there will also be one in the description, but uh, you can totally reach out to me uh, through through email and just say, hey, do you want to set up a meeting? And we'll totally jump into that and 
uh, I'll just show you whatever pretty much you want to learn and we can we can do some cool stuff there. But yeah, that's all.